Welcome to Token Post Daily News Briefing, where we provide the latest and exclusive news on blockchain and cryptocurrency. On our top stories, we have Kuwait's launch of Ripple-based cross-border payment system, Mt. Gox CEO's plead for innocence, and a $1 million hack on Electrum. Stay tuned for more. I'm Errol Sun, and this is your Daily News Briefing. The National Bank of Kuwait has announced to launch a Ripple-based cross-border payment system called the NBK Direct Remit. According to the announcement published on the official website, the bank plans to launch a cross-border live payment service based on RippleNet's enterprise blockchain technology. Dubbed as the NBK Direct Remit, the service will be available to customers 24-7 for global remittance. The deputy CEO of Group Operation and Technology, Mr. Dimitrios, stated that this service will not only allow customers to transfer money within seconds, but will also enable cross-border payments any time of the day. Ripple Net Blockchain Solution is often deemed as the most viable payment mechanism using blockchain. While expressing the excitement Ripple feels upon the announcement, the company stated that they will continue to work with the National Bank of Kuwait to connect to them to the current partners of Ripple. The National Bank of Kuwait, or NBK, is one of the largest financial institutions within the region. And if Ripple does continue this aggressive expansion on partnerships, one day we might just be seeing the logo of Ripple on every corner of our credit cards. The legendary 850,000 Bitcoin hack of Mt. Goss. It's been deemed as one of the most iconic hacks throughout the history of crypto. And the trial for the hack as well as the embezzlement within the exchange has been an issue worldwide. But just today, the former CEO Mark Carpellis pleaded his innocence once again on the final argument of his trial. According to Cointelegraph Japan, Carpellis, who is currently under trial for a 340 million yen embezzlement suspicion, claimed that he had declared and subtracted the money as a loan from the company. Upon the trial, he did state that he was going to put the money back where it belonged, but despite his attempts, the Japanese prosecutors asked for a 10-year prison sentence for the stolen money. The decision is scheduled to be made in the coming March of 2019, and with Carpellis constantly denying the theft and the manipulation of the Mt. Gox ledger, the debate continues. A surprising Reddit post shook the crypto world today claiming that a hacker tampered with the Electrum wallet, stealing almost 250 bitcoins. On how this hack took place, the hacker did not make attempts to break the security of Electrum wallet itself. Rather, by utilizing the server response messaging capability of the wallet, the hacker fished users to send their crypto to the hacker's account. If a wallet was connected to one of the servers taken over by the hacker and the owner of the wallet tried to make a transaction, the user would receive a pop-up notification about an update. Then if the user clicks on the scam URL, the amount that the user was going to send would go to the hacker instead. This clever attempt successfully made dozens of transactions and left all of the users speechless. While the stolen Bitcoin have been moved from the location to a another account, when searched the total sum of hack amounted to approximately 245 Bitcoins. With the hack taking place just about 18 hours ago and ongoing, users of Electrum Wallet are given a strict warning to watch out for a false update URL. The city of Seoul, located in South Korea, has announced to launch a $131 million innovation fund to incubate growing tech industries, which includes fintech, culture contents, and blockchain. When it comes to the traditional venture capital market, being adventurous to invest in a growing market has some risks. However, the city of Seoul has stepped forward to incubate these prominent fields of technology. The fund, which amounts to $131 million, will invest in seven different sectors as blockchain, fintech, and culture content. Starting from the beginning of 2019, the fund will allot $13 million to venture incubation, while the rest will be operated as a fund of funds for both public and private development. 
South Korea recently released news on the implementation of blockchain technology within its public sectors. Now, it seems the government is taking more aggressive measures for the growth and implementation of blockchain technology. The U.S. Defense Department has stated that blockchain can also help in disaster relief. According to the official report published by the U.S. Defense Logistics Agency, the U.S. government believes that the digital, decentralized, distributed ledger technology bears great potential, especially when it comes to disaster recovery. Taking the example of power restoration in Puerto Rico, they believe that it was a mission success in revealing the future prospect of blockchain. While a lot of claims and comments were discussed within the report, another general consensus was that when applied with improvement, blockchain would also help the field of logistics and tracking. Just as the internet transformed the way we communicate, they believed that blockchain would transform the way we trust and transact. The department concluded by announcing their plans to research the previous case of Puerto Rico for future development. They also stated that they will also be making continuous efforts and research to bring about the full potential of the blockchain technology. We bring the latest news to you. That was your Token Post Daily News Briefing. I'm your host, Hun. Thanks for watching.